Welcome back to PTL. That's the Mount Lebanon High School Percussion Ensemble getting us in the Christmas spirit. And that is because today is KDK's Free Care Fund Christmas in July Telethon. The Free Care Fund at UPMC Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh helps thousands of families every year. In fact, last year alone, it helped some 30,000 families pay for medical care that they otherwise may not have been able to afford. And your donations make that happen, so we applaud you. And we want to go back live now to our phone bank in Lawrenceville. Daisy and Ron are standing by. Who do you have with you now? <laughs> hey, we have Brooke Eknat here with uh, with uh, Howard Hanna, and uh, you were just answering the phones. How are things getting going, and, and what are you, I mean, how busy are these phones right now? They're busy, which is really, really great. It's awesome that people are calling in and donating to this fantastic cause, so it's awesome. Is this your first year for you that you've been here manning the phone bank? Yeah, very, very, very new. Howard Hanna has been involved for many, many years with the Free Care Fund, so we've had lots of volunteers over the year, but this is my first year on the phone line, so. I mean, you look like a veteran. You brought the hat <laughs> in. Thank you. Thank you. I had to represent. I had to be festive. So. Right, definitely. Um, tell us just a little bit, and I know this is your first year, but why is it so important for Howard Hanna to get involved? It's vital. At Howard Hanna, it's really important that we are making an impact in our communities. Um, the Children's Free Care Fund actually partners with 20 different hospitals um, throughout the country, which is really, really wonderful. So um, we want to make an impact here in Pittsburgh and, you know, do the work. Awesome. Great. All right. I was trying the last time to get someone to catch this, so I wanted to throw it up. And I'll let <laughs> you catch go. it. Yeah. You must have been a volleyball player in a future I was life. Not. I have too many, too many things in my hands. I can't right, help right, out. Right. But be sure to make sure uh, to call. You've got 412-692-8900 to make a donation. And you can talk to one of these lovely yep. people. Brooke is right here. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. I, I still think we should call in. I know. Why not? Yeah, all right, during the commercial break, we're calling you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and time now to share another UPMC Children's story of survival with you. Yeah, Rosie McQuillan's life was threatened just weeks after she was born by a common virus that most of us are able to fight off. KDKA's Lindsay Ward first shared Rosie's story back with us in, September, in December, rather, and we wanted to share it again with you today. Amanda McQuillan and Adam Rivetta are proud parents of two little boys, three-year-old Ezra and 18-month-old Winston. So when they found out bows and flowers would likely cover their latest addition, they were surprised. Super surprised just because, like, you know, after two boys, you're just kind of, like, expecting another boy. And whenever it was a girl, I think we both were shocked and like taken back but we were we were very excited they say everything went smoothly from the pregnancy to the birth of their baby girl rosie in july but when they came home from the hospital the initial time spent at their coriopolis house as a family of five was cut short when she was less than two weeks old amanda began to notice something was off about rosie while giving her a bath she was just twitching like it was kind of something little in her arm nothing too crazy just a little twitch the couple brought their newborn to the pediatrician where the twitching stopped but when they came back home rosie's condition worsened they packed what they could and took their daughter to the er at upmc children's hospital of pittsburgh i think at that time we were trying to convince ourselves better safe than sorry, better to go in and get it checked out and then say everything's fine and just come on home like it's a normal day. So what they thought was going to be at most a one day visit turned out to be a 22 day stay at the hospital. During that time, Rosie had numerous tests, including an MRI. Her brain and the lining of her brain was swollen. So if you had acute meningitis, you know, the brain swelling is you know, swollen, and if you have acute encephalitis, your brain is swollen. Unfortunately, she had both. At the hospital, Rosie continued to have seizures and had to be put on a ventilator. Her tiny, seven-pound body covered in tubes and wires. For the couple, every day was excruciating. Amanda stayed with Rosie while her husband, Adam, travels back and forth to keep their family updated. Fortunately, like, we had a lot of great doctors to, like, really kind of give us things or give me things in layman's terms and also have her to kind of start to really start to explain things so that, you know, um, kind of make you feel a little bit better about things. 
Over time, Rosie's condition improved, and after several procedures, she was no longer seizing and she was breathing on her own. But with weeks of uncertainty and the stress of the situation weighing heavily on the couple, it was the kindness of a UPMC worker offering to handle Rosie's appointments that brought Amanda to tears. Um, you know, that just, it just made the difference because we went through so much and we were so overwhelmed, so just having somebody to say, I can take this weight off of you is huge. Now at four months old, Rosie is doing well. She's on anti-seizure medicine and is only getting stronger. As for Amanda and Adam, they say the support they received is something that will stick with them for life. Lindsay Ward, KDKA News. Oh. So much emotion there. Yeah. And we have an update to share about Rosie. <laughs> Check out these recent photos of her. Yeah, she just turned one this month. She did have some tubes put in her ears recently, but we're happy to say she is doing great. And that is so wonderful to be able to oh. report. And it looks like she's celebrating Christmas in July, too. It does. <laughs> yes. She's part of the team. Thank you, Rosie. And thank you to her family for sharing that story. It really yeah. speaks to why this is so important. Absolutely. And you know, maybe in a decade or so, Rosie can be our junior co-host for telethon. You never know. You never We're know. always looking for them. But for now, that honor belongs to 14-year-old Taylor Rolls of Aspenwall. So let's go back to her now at UPMC Children's. Hey, Taylor. Hi, Heather and David. I'm going to hear those phones ring. Call 412-692-8900. Go online at givetochildrens.org slash telethon or simply scan the QR code on your screen. And if you donate right now, our match partner, GBU Life, will double your donation. You can also become a hero in healing by pledging to donate $20 a month. And remember, all the money raised for the Free Care Fund stays right here in Pittsburgh to help kids and families at Children's. Back to you, Heather and David. <laughs> All right, you heard Taylor. Let's make those phones ring. Come on, we want every one of them ringing, and our phone bank volunteers agree. Keep the calls coming. They're ready for you. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with lots more during the Free Care Fund Christmas in July telethon on PTL.